At this point, I'd like to take the opportunity to remind you of something that everybody already knows, but not everyone is willing to face. Good and evil do exist, and our survival depends on being able to distinguish one from the other. The Quran and Muslims tell us that Muhammad was noble and praiseworthy. History says otherwise, unless, of course, Muslims consider the following traits noble, being a liar, pedophile, assassin, genocidal racist, sorcerer, sexist, demon-possessed man, polytheist, thief, slave master, rapist, money grubber, hypocrite, terrorist. If you've gotten this far, you understand what Muhammad caused by inventing Islam. What may still be unclear, however, is his motive. People don't just get up in the morning, look in the mirror, and think to themselves, who can I screw over today? There's a reason for everything. As we go down the list of Muhammad's character traits, I will explain the reason for each. Muhammad was, first and foremost, a liar. He told the Jews that Allah was their God and that he himself was a prophet who could be found in their scriptures. Tabari 7 verse 85 and Ishaq verse 363. Jews, beware lest Allah brings on you the kind of vengeance which he brought upon the Quraysh. Accept Islam and become Muslims. You know that I am a prophet. You will find me in your scriptures and in Allah's covenant with you. Anyone who has read both the Old and New Covenants and the Quran knows without a doubt that this is completely false. So why would he do that? Because God represents ultimate authority. If you can convince people that you are speaking on behalf of God, they will abandon all other things and obey your commandments. Even if you order them to give you money, abandon their family for you, and murder anyone who stops believing. There is absolute power to be had in being a false prophet. Muhammad was a pedophile. Considering he claimed prophetic status, how can I level such a serious accusation against him? Because Bukhari, volume 7, number 65, Tabari 9, verses 128 to 131, and Muslim 8, verses 3309, all declare that he married a six-year-old child named Aisha and had sex with her when she was nine. Modern-day Muslims, following their prophet's example, also take children for their wives. Allah was okay with him doing it, so Allah won't hold it against them. Muhammad was an assassin. In Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 52, Number 270, the prophet said, Who is ready to kill Ka'b bin Ashraf, who has really hurt Allah and his apostle? Muhammad bin Mislama said, Oh, Allah's apostle, do you want me to kill him? He replied in the affirmative. So in this verse, he ordered his militants to murder the local poets in certain towns. Why poets, you may be wondering? Well, because poets were the journalists of their days. As Muhammad became infamous for his terrorist raids on caravans and settlements, poets would condemn his deeds and speak in sympathy for his victims. Therefore, Muhammad had them killed as a warning to anyone else who spoke against him. If you think the world needs more people like Muhammad, keep letting the public media withhold information about Islam. What they tell us is less important than what they don't tell us. Muhammad was a racist, and to the Jews, genocidal. He called the Jews a treacherous, lying, and evil people, greedy for illicit gain, apes and pigs. In contrast, he called Arabs the most noble people on earth. Oh, and Malcolm X, this one's for you. Bukhari, Volume 9, Book 89, Number 256. Allah's Apostle said, You should listen to and obey your ruler, even if he is a black African slave whose head looks like a raisin. My genocide accusation comes from Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 52, Number 176. It is why the Islamic nations have ganged up on Israel multiple times, 1948, 1956, 1967, 1968, 1973, and attempted to finish Hitler's job of annihilating them. So, why all the fuss? Simply put, it's because the Jews wouldn't accept Muhammad as a prophet. People like this don't deserve praise, they deserve handcuffs. Or straitjackets. Muhammad was a sorcerer. Bukhari, Volume 6, Book 61, Number 536, declares that he would cup his hands together and blow over them reciting surahs. He would then rub his hands over whatever parts of his body he could reach, starting with his head, face, and frontal areas. Muhammad did this because he thought it would keep him healthy and protected. 
If you believe in magic, you know that this is incompatible with God, or at least the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that the Muslims pretend to follow. If you don't believe in magic, it's sufficient to know that Allah's apostle did. What does that tell you about his reliability? Is it okay that Muslims are blowing themselves and us to pieces over his promises? Muhammad was a womanizer. Tabari 9 verse 126 says, The messenger of Allah married 15 women. He combined 11 at a time and left behind 9. The extra ones must have been concubines. I did my own head count and I can give you the names and significances of 14 of them. They are as follows. Khadija, Muhammad's first wife slash mother figure. Aisha, his child bride. Muleika, whose father he killed in Mecca. Gazia, who Muhammad learned of via gossip. Safia, whose husband he killed amongst the Kaibar Jews. Juaria, who was the war spoil from the Murazi raid. Um, a Christian taken by Muhammad. Zainab, his daughter-in-law. Mariah, a slave sent to Muhammad as a gift. Alaya, a Bakr woman whom Muhammad later divorced. Patalia, a woman Muhammad married, but he died before he could have sex with her. Layla, who offered herself in marriage to Muhammad to the dismay of her parents. Hafsa, demanded by Muhammad when her husband died at Badar. And Sada, who, when it was her turn to have sex with Muhammad, passed to Asia. Does any of this really need explained, or does it speak for itself? Muhammad was demon-possessed. His very first call to Islam occurred in a cave when a dark spirit attacked him and nearly pressed him to death. When he ran home to his wife, he told her with his own mouth that something bad had happened to him. Bukhari, Volume 6, Book 60, Number 478. Towards the end of his terrorist career, he told his child wife Aisha that everyone had a devil attached to them. When she asked if he did also, this was Muhammad's answer. Yes. But Allah protects me from him, and he does not command me but for good. Muslim uh, chapter 14, book 39, number 6757. So, why would Satan choose an illiterate Arab with a childhood of neglect and an inferiority complex to be his prophet? Well, one, he was a descendant of Esau, whom Yahweh, the God of the Bible, were told would be an enemy of Jacob and his Jewish descendants. And two, Muhammad was a very bitter man. As a child, he'd been rejected by his parents and other close relatives. If anyone was qualified to hate mankind as much as Satan did, it was Muhammad. Then again, Satan might have gone through a bunch of people in an attempt to make a suitable counterfeit of Judaism and Christianity. Muhammad may have simply been the candidate who actually succeeded. Muhammad was a polytheist. He used to worship all the pagan gods at Mecca's idol center, which is called the Kaaba. He stopped doing this after the cave spirit episode, but when Allah was singled out, he wasn't the god of the Jews. No, this Allah was the biggest idol in the Kaaba, and he had three daughter goddesses named Manat, Al-Lat, and Al-Uzza. Tabari 6 verse 108 and on, and Ishaq 165 and on, tells us of a time during Muhammad's Meccan ministry when he was offered sex, power, and money if he would tell Meccans to worship Allah's daughters. Muhammad did so. He later retracted his words saying Satan had put them on his tongue, but it was too late. Muhammad had proven himself unworthy of trust. For the record, Allah and Yahweh aren't the same God. Aside from the different names, Yahweh never lived in a stone at the Kaaba, never had any daughters, and never had non-Jewish prophets, let alone ones that couldn't perform miracles. Muhammad was a thief. His very first prophetic acts after gathering a band of warriors consisted of sending out armed men to steal from Meccan caravans. Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 59, Number 702. Allah did not admonish anyone who had not participated in, in the Ghazwa raid of Badar, for in fact, Allah's apostle had only gone out in search of the Kurish caravan so that he could rob it. And when he wasn't robbing fellow Arabs, he was bullying Jews out of their money. Tabari 7 verse 158 The messenger of Allah besieged the Nadir Jews for 15 days. In the end, they made peace with him on the condition that the Prophet would not shed their blood and that their property and possessions would be his. Muhammad was a slave master. 
Whenever his militants attacked and conquered a settlement, he would take women and children as slaves. Tabari 8 verse 34. Saad turned away from the messenger out of respect. He said, I pass judgment that their men should be killed, the property divided, and the children and women should be made slaves. Muhammad replied, You have passed judgment on them with the judgment of Allah from above seven heavens. Since the slaves were typically women and children, you can almost guess what my next accusation will be. Muhammad was a rapist. We know that he owned slaves, but the following Quran verse irrefutably proves what he used them for. Quran 70 verses 29 through 30. Honored are those who guard their private parts, except with their wives and the women slaves and captives whom their right hands possess, for then they are not to be blamed. That's right everyone, since slavery is involuntary servitude and rape is involuntary sex, the Quran just condoned rape. The most reliable Muslim historian in Islam agrees. Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 59, Number 459. I entered the mosque, saw Abu, sat beside him and asked about sex. Abu said, We went out with Allah's apostle and we received female slaves from among the captives. We desired women and we love to do poetus interruptus. If you don't know what it means, look it up on the internet. No, strike that, don't do it. Let's just move on. Muhammad was a money grubber. Ishaq 313, for instance, references the Battle of Badar, the first Muslim war victory, in which Muhammad's forces failed to capture the caravan they were after, but managed to take hostages for ransom. The Muslims told Abu Sufyan to pay them a ransom to free his son Amar. He replied, Am I to suffer the double loss of my blood and my money? After you've killed my son Hanzala, you want me to pay you a ransom to save Amar? But that's okay, because Jesus preached ransom for captives too. Oh wait, no he didn't. That was a solely Islamic thing. Muhammad was a hypocrite. When he relocated to Medina, he held a grudge against the people of Mecca for throwing the Muslims out of their homes. Now mind you, they weren't driven out. Tabari 6 verse 139 says that Muhammad ordered all the Muslims to migrate to Medina. But whatever, Muhammad blames the Meccans for forcing him out just because he believes in Allah. Then he turns around and expels the Jews of Medina from their homes just because they don't believe in Allah. It's right there in the Quran. Quran 59 verse 2. It was Allah who drove the people, the Bani Nadir Jews, from their homes and into exile. They refused to believe. You did not think they would go away, and they imagined that their strongholds would protect them. But Allah came at them from where they did not suspect and terrorized them. Their homes were destroyed. So learn a lesson, men who have eyes. This is my warning. There are a thousand examples of this. I just picked out what I thought was the most obvious. Muhammad's hypocrisy ranked second only to his lying, in my opinion. And that's saying something because Muhammad was a terrorist. We know this because I inventoried over 70 terrorist raids of his in a previous video. And I suppose all the terror we see from today's jihadists might have something to do with his example. The only question is, why did he rely on terrorism instead of words? Because we know from the Islamic histories that words didn't work. That's why Islam was spread by the war of compulsion, why anyone born to a Muslim father is considered Muslim by default, why anyone who tries to leave Islam gets killed. Islam isn't the fastest growing religion because it's appealing. It grows because the only way out is death, either killing infidels or being killed by Muslim fundamentalists. Muslims continue to venerate Muhammad as a good person. Now you know what they consider to be good people. While tolerating Islam is politically correct, it is monumentally stupid. I'm tired of it already.